Hi, everybody. We're probably going to do your favorite section, which is solve linear equations and word problems. This is from IXL Algebra 1, uh, as you can see from my Nemo's friend over there. Uh, I love these, but uh, I, I decided to make them a surprise, so we'll see how they turn out. Uh, this is J10. We're going to see if we can solve some word problems. Mostly, I'm going to set them up. Uh, it says, Colin's retirement party costs $11 plus an additional $1 for each guest he invites. If there are 29 guests, how many will Colin, how much will Colin's retirement party cost? So basically this is a linear function where one is the rate at which he's charged per guest. And it says that it costs the $11 is just a flat fee. So this is going to be, if you write it directly, 11 plus 1 x for the number of guests. I kind of like g in this case. And uh, this is the cost of the, of, the, uh, of the retirement party. So in general, we call this f maybe of g. It's a function of how many guests he invites. This is the formal way to write it. Uh, what they want me to find is how what how much it costs for 29 guests so the formal way of writing this is find f of 29 for this linear function uh, each guests cost one dollar that's the the rate at which we're going to be charged per guest plus the original eleven dollars makes a total of forty dollars for the retirement party and that's what we're going to put in they overtaught it, but that's okay. All right, let's look at the next one. Uh, so Susie's graduation picnic costs three dollars for each attendee. Okay, so we're going to use instead of guests, we're talking about attendees. I'm going to use a for each one, and for every, a good way to think of it is that's multiplying. So it's going to be three times the number of attendees. How many attendees can there be if Susie, Susie budgets a total of $18 for her picnic? Well, we want 3A to be less than or equal to 18 actually, but we want to get the maximum number, so it's actually the equation. And in order to solve this, and you tell them that A, we're going to divide by 3 on both sides. If this were an inequality, which it is, uh, it could be a could be less than or equal to six attendees. And so the maximum number, uh, how many can there be? They're assuming that it could be anything from zero to six, but we're going to put six. A puppy named Peanut started out weighing three pounds and gained one pound every month. This is the rate of change. This is called the slope. Um, we have a, a, a function that describes peanuts weight. So this is uh, the weight based on how many months go by. And he started out with three pounds and he adds one pound every month. So this is the way to write this function. We are interested in his weight at seven months. And notice that I like to use the uh, variable that is represented there. Instead of using x and y or f of x and f of y or f of x and uh, x, I prefer to use m for the number of months. So we want to know his weight after seven months, which is three plus one times the seven months that go by, which of course is 10 pounds. Don't forget that when you're talking about word problems, it's a good idea to put your label your units. 10. All right. Uh, Ayana cycles three kilometers during each trip to work. After 14 trip to work, trips to work, how many kilometers will she have cycled in total? So it says each trip. Again, the each is the multiplication. So it's three, three, three kilometers for each trip. And that's going to be equal to the total distance or maybe distance T 
we could have called it k of t for the number of kilometers. And we want to know for how many trips, uh, 14 trips to work. So we're interested in 3 times 14, which is going to give us the distance for 14 trips to work, which happens to be 42 kilometers. Again, that's the way to formally write uh, functions. 42, sorry. I'm just going to put 14 in the line. Mm -hmm. Natalie already baked one cake and she can make one for each additional stick of butter ooh, that she buys. So she has one and she can make one more for each uh, butter that she has. And this is the number of cakes based on how much butter she has. So again, I, I try to write functional notation that makes sense. This is the number of cakes that Natalie can get uh, based on how much butter she has. She has, she wants uh, how much butter, how many additional sticks does she need to make 23 cakes? So what we're interested in is we want this to be 23 and we want to find the B that will make this true. And we subtract one from both sides. And of course, B is equal to 22 sticks of butter that she's going to need to make 23 cakes. Uh, Clayton reads three books each month. This represents the number of books over months. Dang it. Uh, it's not right. There's, there's no, I guess it doesn't let me write up there. So the books after a certain number of months is equal, equal to the number of books he reads each month. Uh, if Clayton has read 39 books so far, it's 39 books. And we want to know how many months have gone by. Well, if he reads three books each month, there are 13 months that have gone by. Assuming he's reading three each month. Tim already has one flower in the garden and grows seven flowers with each seed packet. Uh, I'm going to use P for seed packets. Uh, and this is going to be the number of flowers in the garden. So uh, based on the number of seed packets. Uh, that's our functional notation. The number of flowers based on the seed packets is one plus seven P uh, with four seed packets. So we want how many flowers will he have if he has four seed packets? And you substitute this, the four for the P. And that's going to be one plus 28 or 29 flowers. I know I'm being really formal here, but I want you guys to learn the functional notation early. Uh, Antonio can grow three plants with each seed packet. Uh, Again, 3P. I don't know about using uh, P for plants. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of have a problem here. And this is one of the issues where you run into an issue. If I want to use P for the seed packets, I can't use P for the number of plants. So in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and use X for the number of seed packets. And I'm going to go ahead and define my variable as x seed packets. So the number of plants is equal to, depending on how many x's you have, is equal to 3x. And we want 18 plants. So clearly, he's going to need six seed packets to make 18 plants. A person can pay $18 for a membership to the art museum and then go to the museum for just $13 per visit. That is 18 plus 13 for each visit. This is going to be the cost depending on the number of visits that he takes. And we want to find the total cost of two visits. So we're really looking for C of two. That's how we read that. And we just substitute the two in for the, the V here. 
And so it's going to be 18 plus the 26. It's going to be the total cost of two visits, which is 44. I know you guys are probably going to do this much faster than I do. There you have it. Uh, Kenneth already has taken one picture at home and he expects to take one picture for every day of vacation. So I'm going to use uh, the number of pictures, uh, depending on the number of days of vacation, is equal to one that he has at home plus one for each day. So we're interested in 13 days of vacation. So 13 is the days and the number of pictures is one plus one times the number of days. The reason I'm doing uh, this step by step is because I want you guys to learn the function notation. This can get much, much more complicated. Uh, there's going in, so in 13 days, he's going to take obviously 14 pictures or he's going to have 14 at home. Oscar set his watch six seconds behind. If it falls behind another one second every day, how far behind is Oscar's watch if he last set it 69 days ago? Well, the 69 plus the six, I mean, that's clear, but I want you to be able to write the, the function for this. So uh, let's see, this is going to be lost time. So the total lost time, depending on how many days go by, is equal to, uh, this is going to be lost time. So it's six seconds behind, and then he's going to also lose one second every day. These are both really negative values, so we could talk about it as being negatives. Or you could talk about time lost, or you could talk about what is his, how does his time register in a, in a zero or a positive sense. Well, this is negative six plus negative one times the 69 days, which means that he's going to be a total of 75 seconds. The negative indicates that it's 75 seconds behind, or we could have just simply said it was seconds away. So it's gonna be 75. Uh, Victoria takes two quizzes each week. That means she's going to take two each week. How many weeks of school will Valerie have to attend before she will have taken 16 quizzes? So the number of quizzes based on the number of weeks that goes by is 2W. And we want to know what happens, how many weeks have gone by if she's taken 16 quizzes. Clearly, you can do it in your head, but again, it's good to practice the formal method. This is eight weeks. Susan has already read six books. That is her initial starting point. And she plans to read five books every month. There's uh, this five is the rate of change. Uh, she has read 56 books so far. So this is the number of books based on the number of months going by. And the number of books is 56. And you need to solve this. Subtract the six from both sides, you get five M equals 50. Divide by five and you get the M is equal to 10 months. Luther already has already scored 51 points and he scores 22 more points with every coin he collects, plus 22 per coin. This is the number of points that he has depending on the number of coins. You see, this is my dependent variable and my independent variable is the coins. That's how you describe it. Uh, this is a, the number of points he has is a function of the number of coins that he earns. Uh, in this case, if he's collected two coins, so we want P of two, which isn't very interesting. It's just 51 plus the 22 times the two coins, which is 51 plus 44, or 95 total. That is 95 points. Uh, 
uh, Sierra uh, has already prepared eight kilograms of dough and will continue preparing one kilogram of dough per each hour. So this is eight plus one every hour. And we're interested in, uh, I, I'm gonna say K kilograms of dough based on the number of hours that have gone by. And it says, uh, if she works for three hours, so it's the three represents the hours. And this, of course, is 11. Eight plus three is 11 kilograms of dough if she works three hours. If she had worked 30 hours, then it would be 110. You know, it's uh, you just substitute in the number of hours she worked. That would be 11. Uh, Todd's auto work, uh, wash earns a to earns revenue of 19 per customer. In all, how many customers does he need to have $57 in revenue? He's going to divide, of course, this is the revenue based on the number of customers. So revenue depends on the number of customers. Each customer brings in $19. That's called the rate of change. And we want it to be equal to 57. So we divide by 19 on both sides. And C is equal to three. So if he has three customers, he'll have $57 in revenue. <clears throat> Latrell learns four new recipes during each week. Oh, well, I'm getting the phone call, so I am going to end there. I think that's enough anyway. I'm sure you guys get the idea. So good luck. <laughs>